Hey, thanks for joining us for The Monster at the End of This Podcast. I'm Lauren. I'm Chris. And this is just the podcast where we watch each episode of Supernatural and kind of review each different aspects about it and whatever else we want to talk about. Today's episode that we're going to be reviewing is Season 1, Episode 5, Bloody Mary, written by Eric Kripke, with teleplay by Ron Milbar and Terry Hughes Burton, directed by Peter Ellis. The synopsis from IMDb is a game of Bloody Mary unleashes a ghost who lives in mirrors and kills by gouging out the eyes of her prey. Sam and Dean must find a way to stop her before she claims another victim. So starting with plot. Yeah, um, so we see Sam's premonitions addressed in this episode. Yeah. Because when Bloody Mary is trying to kill him, his reflection says... You've been, you had dreams before Jess died about her dying that way. So, this is the episode where we see mention of his premonitions. Yeah, and I think that's, that's basically it for plot in this episode. Um, like overall plot Mm -hmm. was kind of the like hinting at Sam's like secret and knowing about, uh, that before Jess actually died. Um, so. Yeah, and then also, we don't know, we can't be sure that this isn't the reason why um, their lives suck, but 600 years of bad, bad luck is what breaking Dean said. Breaking all those mirrors. From yeah. breaking all those mirrors, and so, I mean... And their life does kind of suck. suck. You don't know, it, it could be, could yeah. be this. <laughs> um, moving on to lore, so this was a vengeful spirit, Bloody Mary, so... Bloody Mary, she's the typical, um, she, the story of Bloody Mary is said throughout the, throughout all over and it never actually kills people, but in this case, there is actually, um, a real Mary Worthington who was killed and so she tried spelling the name of her killer out in her blood before she died, but she didn't. She couldn't finish Mm -hmm. because of her wounds. Yeah, and so now her job that she thinks her job is, is if she is summoned, even if the person who summoned her isn't hiding something, something. if she is summoned and she sees somebody who is hiding a a secret secret where someone else was killed. Yeah. Then she's going to make them pay. So she goes wherever the mirror goes. And so it's in this location and that's why it's happening to this town. Um, And, so some we got a little bit of lore on mirrors that they could be a true reflection of one's soul bad luck to break them and that they can capture spirits which is why a lot of people cover the mirrors up after somebody dies yeah and when we thought of that we're gonna i'm gonna talk about the netflix show um bly manor real quick in one of the episodes spoiler alert um some of the mirrors are covered when one of the characters is super sick and dying. So I thought of that too. That yeah, was that a good is really connection because that did happen. Mm-hmm. And people t- did do that because that is lore that we see in our reality. Yeah. Then in the mirror, she gets she confronts them. It makes them confront themselves and, and face their face, own lies yes. coming from their own mouths, mm-hmm. which would be shocking, creepy. To me. I mean, I, this is a comment I had for later, but I'll say it now. My reflection started talking to mm-hmm. me and or doing something different than I did. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> That's a fear of mine, though. Because, really? yeah, long story short, one of my friends said man in the mirror when she was sleepwalking. Mirrors are terrifying. <laughs> so mirrors are scary and... I would literally start crying. (laughs) I mean, I would. Tears. Tears Mm -hmm. of blood, so. Yes, tears of blood. Um, At the end, my thought process was her own logic works on herself. Yeah. So she conveniently poofed into dust. I think, I don't think, you're making that sound like it's a bad thing. Well, I just, that just seemed like a very convenient way to get rid of her, but she was seeking revenge on those hiding a secret. I just don't see why she would kill herself when she could continue. Because she's been, she's been killing so many people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true because we don't know who she hurt before 
the people in this town. Mm-hmm. You know, she could have been in a different town and do- did this to, like, two other people. Mm-hmm. So her body count could be higher than... I'm sure it is. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I didn't really like how it just I thought that seemed was... convenient. It just seemed too convenient for me. I thought that was really clever. I have the complete opposite view as you i think that w- worked really well i really like that she mm-hmm. got a taste of her own medicine that's what took her down um and so yeah i mean agree or disagree i love mm-hmm. that um and then just a funny comment was when she she started cr- crawling out of the mirror she looked like samara from the ring oh. crawling out of the tv yeah i, was like, I thought wow, that was pretty creepy is, yeah it is it's very creepy and that's why the ring is very creepy too um <laughs> but I just, I instantly thought it was the same thing. Yeah, it, I'm definitely, I definitely think they got a little inspiration yeah. from that. Um, now to character development. Uh, so we got a little bit more of Dean being good with kids. It was just kind of a small thing. But when he was talking with, um, I forgot her name. Yeah, the young sister. The young who sister. initiated, well, the slumber party Yes, who girl. said it? Yep, she the, said the Bloody Mary. She said Bloody Mary. And so she was saying, like, it's all her fault, and she's doing this, and, like, and it's Bloody Mary, and instead of, like, dismissing her, like, ghosts aren't real, like her sister is saying, well, mm-hmm. he's like, well, he acknowledges what she's thinking. She's like, he's like, well, he didn't say it, you did, so. Right. And... I will say we do get a little support from Sam. I'll give some su- Sam support right now. Um, Sam was the one that initiated talking to the kid when he was like, no, like, mm. what, what do you think happened? Why mm-hmm. would you say that? Like, you know, he was trying to get her to talk more. Mm-hmm. So we did have a little Sam kid interaction mm-hmm. trying to soothe her while getting more facts. But I did like... You know, I always love kid Dean oh, kid interaction. Kid yeah, it's my favorite. Mm, chef's kiss. <laughs> uh, and then also another like small um, smart Dean moment is mm-hmm. he is the one who knows to turn the mirror on Mary, and again it's Dean smart. Okay, he's smart. Mm-hmm. Um, and then for Sam, uh, he is very like secretive in this episode and I don't understand 100% yeah. why he's being so secretive like he's like he he like I don't want to tell you like he, he, even I after the case, even after the case is done he's like mm-hmm, I'm not gonna tell you <laughs> if I told you I'd have to kill like, you <laughs> I don't understand why he kept yeah, that I, in I don't know because I'd be so scared if I w- I saw the exact way my girlfriend died mm-hmm. and then it came true mm-hmm. I'd be like okay yeah. That's weird. <laughs> That's weird. That's suspicious. <laughs> so I don't know why he would keep it in because that, I feel like, is even out of the realm of weird for them. Yeah, so I, I don't know why he is keeping that in. But so that's what where Sam is kind of. And then um, I thought it was kind of funny because Dean's like, you got you to gotta stop this, like these nightmares and calling out her name. I'm like, dude, do you, this is, he can't. He, yeah. <laughs> like, I, first of all. Yeah, you just need to stop. Okay. What? Dean. Like, it doesn't work that way, Thanks. Dean. Thanks. But, and then he's like, that's going to kill you. So it's mainly like for his, he's like, you really need to be like facing this, I think. Mm-hmm. But that's, it comes out in, in, you know, the typical Dean manner. But right. uh, I thought that was just really funny. Not really funny, but when Cass dies a lot, mm-hmm. a lot later, Dean, uh. Bottles it up and yeah, yeah. But <laughs> literally in bottles of whiskey. But yeah, yes. he's very similar acting. So I think that's uh, interesting and mm. just more hypocritical. Right, Dean. more hypocritical Dean early on. Um, we also get a little hypocritical Sam, but I don't think it's fully hypocritical Sam because he says at the end that Charlie should forgive herself uh, for her boyfriend's death, mm-hmm. and Dean's like, you know, that's good, that's good advice. Um, and then I think, like, based on the the music and, like, the imagery, that was kind of like a a closing of the door for Sam, or closing of the curtains, opening of new ones. Like, he's kind of moving on a little bit from Jess, especially seeing her. Yeah, I think like, he's beginning that process of mm-hmm. moving on. Because um, he, in, like, two episodes from now, he gets his first kind of, like, flirting with another girl. Right. So, I think, and with her being dressed in all white, versus 
the dark scene mm-hmm. imagery. It was of very his bright, and bright and beautiful. Yes, it was very bright, beautiful. Wind flowing. She was smiling mm-hmm. in white, looking at him, as if standing there as an angel, mm-hmm. telling him that everything is okay, and she forgives him for not telling right. her. Like, yeah, because he he can't forgive himself, but she's there, like looking like she looks like forgiveness mm-hmm. right there. She looks like forgiveness and happiness and, and he and she she just the message away. that she's okay mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah so i i thought that was really nice to so we can see like kind of that that moving on for sam um also like parallel moment right there same exact like shot in um season eight episode seven mm-hmm. when dean's driving down the road um thinking thinking that he sees Cass. He, he sees well he does see Cass. Yeah. Outside purgatory, but then it's like Cass is like in and out with. It, he mentions it with his powers. Yeah, it's like he's like he flashing and yeah. He, oh yeah, Dean actually wasn't crazy. Yeah, he does see him a couple times, <laughs> but um, yeah, because it's the same exact like you're driving and then just it's head just follows stare, yeah. the and head it's, follows, but and it's really sad because it, Dean's really. Clearly oh, he has, unsettled. Still has the same guilt. Like he was he in the same his... exact moment because he mm-hmm. thinks he didn't get cast he out of purgatory. He thinks that it's his fault too. So yeah, and I thought that was a really cool like parallel um, into cinematography. Yeah. So right at the beginning, um, when the daughter, the young sister, is in the bathroom and she is saying Bloody Mary three times, I don't like how the camera is shaking. When it's focusing on her reflection, mm. I don't fully understand the purpose behind the shaking. Um, I don't. I don't. I don't really know what you're. It was. It looked like it was shaking the camera just like a little bit when it would focus on her looking at her own reflection. Oh. When it focused on anything else, it wasn't shaking. Oh, maybe that was like. Ooh, maybe that. That could be interesting because it. She says it, but it doesn't go after her. So maybe that's kind of like. Just a weird, like, sense that her presence is there, but she doesn't, she's not coming after the kid. Mm. That completely, I just pulled that out of my ass. Yeah. But um, if the writers <laughs> didn't think of it, let's just take that explanation. Why yeah. not? And <laughs> so, yeah, I didn't really like the shaking because I didn't really know why it was happening. And I thought it would have been eerier if the scene was completely quiet and still Ooh. with just her saying mm-hmm. Bloody Mary three times. So, um, Mm-hmm. Moving on to the next uh, reflection scene that we um, get with the second friend. Jill. Yes. The blonde. Yes. Uh, the yeah. one that said Bloody Mary over the phone to scare her friend. Um, when we see her reflection, when that doesn't move, once again, super scary. That is so creepy. But I think that was a great choice for cinematography and even f- to explain Bloody Mary lore a little bit, like, she's controlling the reflection. Bloody yeah. Mary is that. She is the reflection. Yes, and she's showing them themselves. Yeah, their secret. And confessing and, like, their secret to, to them. Like, yeah. telling them right before, like, you and did I think, this. This I is why. I think that was a great choice to continue to use Bloody Mary throughout the episode and then get to the Sam point where Sam's addressing his own. Right. And I think that moves into Sam addressing his issues because right. Sam is the reflection, literally telling him what he already knows. And I think, so, I mean, I I don't think the acting is the greatest as far as this episode goes. Like, as far as the teenagers, like Charlie and Donna and Jill, I thought their acting was it was not the greatest Mm -hmm. um and I thought like a lot of it was kind of cheesy yeah I I totally agree especially when she was on the phone with yeah and saying Bloody Mary it's like it sounded so sexual yeah it was giggling it was so fake yeah they made it they tried to make it too much like regardless of that acting of those three girls I think this episode was awesome for Jared to kind of stretch his acting legs Mm -hmm. with the mirror scene because uh we got the double, like, Sam, mm-hmm. where the next episode, we get that with Dean, because it's Shapeshifter episode. Yeah, the Shapeshifter so, episode. And we get very heavy Dean, like, 
shapeshifter, shapeshifter Dean. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was really cool to kind of introduce that. And um, Jared definitely did a great job. And I, yeah, he's really good. Right. And this was early yeah. stages of TV acting as well. And there's a reason he got this this role. Mm-hmm. Very good. Um, the I really liked the transitions with the nightmares Mm -hmm. sam's nightmares i know that sometimes that can be like just an easy way to transition but i think it really worked in this episode because of the secret right that it was yeah if it was kind of just like if they were just using this in like every episode just as a transition an easy transition it'd be dumb but i thought it was really good in this one Mm -hmm. and speaking of transitions i love the ending of the scene when Sam and Dean are in the shop and Sam yeah. is summoning Bloody Mary and the scene cuts Ends to black abruptly abruptly when he says his last Bloody right. Mary. Right. Oh, and I good. think that's a great suspense because normally if you were watching it on television, there would be five minutes of commercial and mm-hmm. you're like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, yeah. he summoned it. Yeah. Now you gotta wait. Right. So. And I just I, thought it, it like, it's lined up so quickly with the like the, Done. Done. Yes. Of the, yes, the, the scene ending closing. and then the blackness. It yes. just aligned. It was really perfect. good. Um, I another thing that I noticed just kind of about at least the earlier seasons in general mm-hmm. that I thought was really cool in like buildings and warehouses and hospitals that they are in a lot. Um, it's usually really really dark and then like when they're talking, there's only like half of their face, like is shown in light Mm -hmm. and it's honestly really annoying to me sometimes because i'm like it's so freaking dark yeah when they go in places it's like um i can't i'm like do i need to turn the brightness up on my tv but no it's just it's just that so i thought that's really interesting but then when they're outside like by the car or Mm -hmm. just like in just like the u.s just when they're driving around on the road on the road it's very it's that really beautiful saturated um effect that they had like i don't know when they stopped doing it but they had it in like the earlier seasons Mm -hmm. that just like tint to the it was beautiful i loved it yeah um and i wish they didn't get rid of it but i i think that was just i thought that was really interesting to notice and it was really apparent in this episode yeah um was not a huge fan of mary melting into the puddle of blood yeah uh that was (laughs) Some interesting special effects. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we'll just skip that. Um, as for literary devices, the only thing that I noticed uh, that I thought was pretty interesting was when Donna finds her dad upstairs uh, in the, towards the beginning of the episode, the music that's playing, I feel like it's almost exactly the same music as when John is going upstairs in episode one to find he hears Mary scream and then he's like walking upstairs. It's like oh, the man. same like piano riff, I think. Mm-hmm. The so, same suspenseful yeah. like something could be wrong but doesn't look like you don't it know or exactly something yet. looks like it's wrong but you don't know. Yeah. So I thought that kind of just like brought you back a little bit to like the first episode into that kind of same sense of like dread or well, I don't know, but the names are the same. Mary. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> um but yeah, that's. I just thought that was kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. So questions and criticisms. Um, yeah, like I said, I wasn't a huge fan of the acting from Jill and Charlie and Donna. Yeah, conversations weren't really that realistic. Yeah, they sounded scripted. very, very scripted. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, <laughs> Sam's breathy voice. There was a lot of it. it like that. Well. That was addressed <laughs> in the last episode that Dean hates on the plane ride. Yeah, mm-hmm. now I can't stop hearing it. And it is annoying the crap out of me how breathy Sam talks to people. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I don't know when that stops because I know he doesn't do that, like, towards the end. Because it would have annoyed the crap out of me. Yeah, I know. So I, don't, I wonder mm. when it, like, when he stops. I know, he keeps up the, like, puppy dog. But he stops with the... But he stops with the, like, whiny, wispy. Um, also, there they go again. Telling people about the supernatural. I know. Just involve everyone <laughs> all the time. Because there seems to be no way around it. Yeah. So, literally every episode, Mm -hmm. (laughs) they've done it. Um, Also, when Dean is so mad that Sam gives up his money to bribe the um, morgue guy, Mm -hmm. like, why was the money that Dean won in the poker game in Sam's wallet anyway? (laughs) Duh, because Dean would spend it on, like, hamburgers. And (laughs) um, he'd probably offer it to a pretty waitress and be like, 
here's your tip, and then, you know, be like, <laughs> my car. Oh, speaking of the horrible acting from those girls, in the bathroom, when the one sister is super angry that mm-hmm. she invited Dean and Sam yeah. back over to the house, when she's like, no, when her friend yeah. starts saying, saying Bloody, Mary, Bloody Mary, she's like, no! That's not... Ugh, she sounded just... very, very forced. Yes. It was bad. Mm-hmm. Um, also, we... We paused the episode to talk about how stupid this was. Um, They know that she jumps around from mirror to mirror, and yet they don't take the mirror out of the fucking room full of, like, like 500 mirrors, mirrors, 1,000 mirrors. That they had just been looking through so they could find this mirror, so they knew there were so many mirrors in there. They obviously... Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. So I just thought... Yeah, it's just... They were very dumb. Yep. Um, Also... The cops. <laughs> yeah. How could the cops, just outside when Dean's talking to them, not hear Sam start smashing, smashing all mirror. those mirrors? Like, I do not understand how these cops did not hear that. Just like the man getting beat up behind the curtain in the airplane in the last episode. <laughs> don't me. understand how all these people hearing. are deaf. Selective hearing. Mm-hmm. So another thing that uh, I kind of had to question that I kind of see a lot of people questioning online, like Tumblr, because it's not really answered. It's not addressed ever again. Mm -hmm. So Dean um, starts bleeding from the eyes when Mary crawls out of the mirror, as well as Sam, Mm -hmm. before he turns the mirror on her. Mm -hmm. So that symbolizes, you know, a deep secret which got somebody killed. Like, I don't know if... That was maybe just because she was so powerful at that point. Anybody would have happened. Right, that's what or, I was thinking at that point. But I feel like I I wasn't able to find any mm-hmm. um, anything like direct quote from Eric Kripke. But I I know that some people online say that Eric Kripke said that they were they were supposed to address it and they never did. Right. But I don't quote me on that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just thought that would, I want to know. Yeah, I want to know too because. <laughs> Each person probably had some form of guilt about it. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, we see Sam's guilty, yeah. and we see um, Charlie's guilty. Charlie is guilty. I'm sure um, Joe was at least a little guilty. I'm sure the husband was at least For a sure. little guilty. Um, so what does Dean feel guilty about, that he made a decision yeah. that caused someone else to die? However, he is in this hunting life. For so, 26 years at this right, point. Right, so he could... I mean, because we just feel guilt over. We see a in the next. We see in the next fifteen seasons him have guilt over some of the th- p- things people he's had to kill. So right, I'm so. sure that there has been instances before this. Mm-hmm. Um, other comments. So at the end of the episode, uh, one thing that I wanted to make note of. Um, on the Netflix version, I'm not sure exactly the song that plays, but I know in the DVD or, like, the original version, um, the Rolling Stones' Laugh I Nearly Died plays, and I just think that one fits really beautifully at the end of it, because it's really sad, but it's also, like, has a beautiful tone to it, which is kind of the, the tone of the ending, where he's, he's moving on, but right. it's really he sad. He has a sadness, because he has a guilt that he's killed. Well, he is guilty, yeah. because he thinks he's had some hand in just dying, but at the same time, he is accepting that he has to address those feelings and has to address his emotions surrounding Jess's death and the fact that he maybe actually predicted it or mm-hmm. saw a premonition of it. Um, so I do think it is a good song choice. Mm-hmm. Um, any other comments? Um, I thought of a BuzzFeed Unsolved episode that we watched a okay. little while ago. We haven't watched that in a long time, but um, it talked about this woman who spontaneously combusted. Okay, yep, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, and they couldn't explain it, Mm -hmm. and I just, in this episode, because when they were at the um, mortician, and they're talking about how it could be a freak... cerebral Yeah, a freak medical accident. Yeah. So, like I was talking about last episode, with the Titanic and everything... Which what would they what would just, they use to explain yeah. spontaneous combustion right. like that? What would they use to explain the spontaneous combustion? These freak accidents, right? So in their universe, could these medical occurrences once again be linked to the supernatural realm, 
So in their universe, it's not unanswered. Mm -hmm. Why? It is answered. That'd be very interesting. Yeah, because... I think the spontaneous combustion woman, like what? <laughs> yeah. I don't know how that happened. So I just thought of it because when they were at the mortician, they were talking about freak medical accidents mm-hmm. and that spontaneous combustion was considered a freak medical accident. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, we ready to go into grades? I think so. You want to go first? Um, I sure will. I think this episode um, deserves an A- minus from me. Um, casual fan, pretty good episode um, to continue with the Monster of the Week. However, many people know what Bloody Mary is, mm-hmm. right? I mean, in middle school, that's something... I mean, those middle school girls were playing yeah. it at the beginning. That's just something you play in middle school. So almost every fan would Everybody have... Would know. Maybe even had an experience of, like, right. oh, I did that in yeah. middle school. Ha-ha. Everybody can have an experience. And then it. it strikes a little fear because it's like, oh, just. Yeah. Because they even said just a little bit. Yeah, because they say, oh, it happens all the time. All the happen? time, yeah. But so, why is it happening here? Right, why is it happening here? So, um, relatively good episode. I didn't give it a full A just because I didn't like the some of the acting by the characters, breathy Sam. I also really didn't like um, some of the camera work, so that's why I would probably just say an A minus. Okay. Yeah, I'd probably give it a B plus because I was not impressed with a lot of the acting other than like Sam and Dean. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I really just liked the ending. Just Sam kind of taking a step forward and moving on. Yeah, so the ending, we see Sam beginning to move on. Um, Yeah, that'll be our grades for today, guys. So join us next time when we talk about skin, the next episode. Season 1, episode 6, about shapeshifters. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.